오늘 말씀은 갈라디아서 2장 11절부터 21절입니다. 먼저 11절부터 14절입니다. 그런데 개바가 안디옥에 왔을 때 잘못한 일이 있어서 나는 얼굴을 마주보고 그를 나무랐습니다. 그것은 개바가 야고보에게서 몇몇 사람이 오기 전에는 이방 사람들과 함께 음식을 먹다가 그들이 오니 할례받은 사람들을 두려워하여 그 자리를 떠나 물러난 일입니다. 나머지 유대 사람들도 그와 함께 위선을 하였고 마침내는 바나바까지도 그들의 위선에 끌려갔습니다. 나는 그들이 복음의 진리를 따라 똑바로 걷지 않는 것을 보고 모든 사람 앞에서 개바에게 이렇게 말하였습니다. 당신은 유대 사람인데도 유대 사람처럼 살지 않고 이방 사람처럼 살면서 어찌하여 이방 사람들어 유대 사람이 되라고 강요합니까? 바울은 베드로와 관련된 또 다른 에피소드를 우리에게 제공하고 있습니다. 율법에 의하면 할례받지 못한 이방 사람들과는 식사자리를 가지면 안됩니다. 그런데 사도행전 10장을 보면 베드로의 경우 고넬료 사건을 통해 유대인의 율법에 기록된 음식법에 대한 입장이 정리되었습니다. 그래서 베드로는 이방인 교회의 대표격인 안디옥에 와서 이방인 그리스도인들과 마음껏 함께 식사할 수 있었습니다. 그런데 야고보 쪽 사람들, 즉 예루살렘에서 온 유대인들을 보자 그들을 두려워하여 식사를 하다가 떠나버린 것입니다. 함께 있던 다른 유대인 그리스도인들도 모두 베드로처럼 식사자리를 떠나는 지경에 이르렀습니다. 그러자 바울은 이런 베드로를 책망했습니다. 왜냐하면 이것은 자신이 믿는 복음의 진리를 떠나 사람들을 의식한 것이기 때문입니다. 바울이 지적하고자 한 것은 음식의 문제보다도 그들이 복음의 진리를 알고 있음에도 사람들의 눈을 의식했다는 것입니다. 이는 14절에서 베드로 보고 유대 사람처럼 살지 않고 이방 사람처럼 살고 있다고 말하는 부분에서 짐작할 수 있습니다. 베드로는 고넬료 사건으로 깨달음을 얻은 후 율법의 음식법을 잘 어기고 있었습니다. 그런데 유대인들이 오자 그들이 안디옥 교회에 문제를 일으킬까봐 두려워 식사자리를 떠나버린 것입니다. 반면 바울은 앞서 예루살렘에서 자신과 동행한 디도에게 할례를 행하려 하자 그것을 적극적으로 거부했습니다. 이런 점에서 자신과 대비되는 베드로의 비겁한 행동을 바울은 지적하고 싶었던 것입니다. 자신의 믿음과 다른 행동을 하는 것은 비겁한 행동이기 때문입니다. 당시 베드로와 함께 식사하던 이방인들에게도 이것은 나쁜 영향을 끼쳤을 것이기 때문입니다. 15절부터 18절입니다. 우리는 본디 유대 사람이요 이방인 출신의 죄인이 아닙니다. 그러나 사람이 율법을 행하는 행위로 의롭게 되는 것이 아니라 예수 그리스도를 믿는 믿음으로 의롭게 되는 것임을 알고 우리도 그리스도 예수를 믿은 것입니다. 그것은 우리가 율법을 행하는 행위로가 아니라 그리스도를 믿는 믿음으로 의롭다고 하심을 받고자 했던 것입니다. 율법을 행하는 행위로는 아무도 의롭게 될수 없기 때문입니다. 우리가 그리스도 안에서 의롭다고 하심을 받으려고 하다가 우리가 죄인으로 드러난다면 그리스도는 우리로 하여금 죄를 짓게 하시는 분이라는 말입니까? 그럴 수 없습니다. 내가 헐어버린 것을 다시 세우면 나는 나 스스로를 범법자로 만드는 것입니다. 더 나아가 바울은 자신이 베드로를 혼내게 된 근거를 추가적으로 설명합니다. 15절에서 우리란 바울과 베드로를 말합니다. 그들은 둘다 유대인입니다. 그런데 유대인인 그들조차도 율법을 지켜서 의롭게 된 것이 아니라고 말합니다. 바울은 사람이 예수 그리스도를 믿는 믿음으로 의롭게 되는 것이지 율법의 행위로 되는 게 아니라고 분명하게 말합니다. 여기서 의롭게 된다는 말은 구원받았다 또는 하나님의 자녀가 되었다 하나님 나라로 옮겨졌다는 말과 같습니다. 또한 여기서 예수 그리스도를 믿는다는 말은 예수님이 십자가에서 죽으시고 부활하셔서 우리를 구원하신 메시아라는 점을 믿는다는 말입니다. 그런데 여기서 주의할 점은 거짓 성경교사들이 갈라디아 교회의 성도들에게 예수님을 믿지 말라고 한 것은 아니라는 말입니다. 거짓 성경교사들이 예수님을 믿지 말고 율법을 행해야만 하나님 자녀가 된다고 말했다면 아마도 갈라디아 교회의 성도들은 결코 속지 않았을 것입니다. 그런데 그들은 예수님을 믿을지라도 율법까지 행해야만 온전한 하나님의 백성이 된다고 말했기에 갈라디아 교회의 성도들이 깜빡소가 넘어진 것입니다. 예수 믿는 것만으로는 부족하니 율법까지 덧붙여야 한다고 속인 것입니다. 바울은 17절에서 이방인들이 율법과 상관없이 예수 그리스도를 믿어 벌써 의롭다고 여겨졌는데 음식법이나 할례 같은 율법을 어겼다고 다시 죄인이 될 수는 없다고 말합니다. 그것은 마치 예수님이 우리를 죄짓게 만드시는 분이 되어버린 것입니다. 
바울은 18절에서 우리가 율법으로 의롭게 되는 것이 아니라는 사실을 자신이 헐어버렸는데 그것을 다시 세우려 하는 것은 스스로를 범법자, 죄인으로 만드는 것이라고 설명합니다. 19절부터 21절입니다. 나는 율법과의 관계에서는 율법으로 말미암아 죽어버렸습니다. 그것은 내가 하나님과의 관계 안에서 살려고 하는 것입니다. 나는 그리스도와 함께 십자가에 못 박혔습니다. 이제 살고 있는 것은 내가 아닙니다. 그리스도께서 내 안에서 살고 계십니다. 내가 지금 육신 안에서 살고 있는 삶은 나를 사랑하셔서 나를 위하여 자기 몸을 내어주신 하나님의 아들을 믿는 믿음 안에서 살아가는 것입니다. 나는 하나님의 은혜를 헛되게 하지 않습니다. 의롭다고 하여 주시는 것이 율법으로 되는 것이라면 그리스도께서는 헛되이 죽으신 것이 됩니다. 이제 바울은 19절에서 이러한 구원의 진리를 비유적으로 표현합니다. 자신이 율법에 대해서는 죽은 것이고 하나님 안에서 사는 것이라고 말합니다. 이것은 율법이 더 이상 우리의 구원에 영향을 미치지 못한다는 말입니다. 바울은 하나님께 율법을 지키려는 노력으로 우리가 구원을 얻는 게 아니라는 것을 다시 한번 강조합니다. 우리는 오직 하나님의 아들을 믿는 믿음으로 구원을 선물로 받았습니다. 율법으로 가능한 일이었다면 아마도 바울은 예수님이 필요 없었을 것입니다. 왜냐하면 앞서 말한 것처럼 바울은 율법을 누구보다 열심히 지키는 열성 유대교 신자였기 때문입니다. 바울은 20절 21절을 통해 자신이 예수 그리스도께서 죽으실 때 자신도 함께 죽었다고 말합니다. 예수님이 십자가에서 죽으신 것은 우리의 죄를 뒤집어 쓰시고 율법의 저주로 인해 죽으신 것입니다. 율법은 죄를 저지른 자마다 저주 아래 놓이게 된다고 말하고 있기 때문입니다. 그래서 주님이 죽으실 때 죄인인 우리 역시 율법의 저주로 죽은 것과 같습니다. 그래서 이제 우리는 예수 그리스도의 은혜로 새 생명을 얻었다는 사실을 믿고 살아가는 것입니다. 오늘의 묵상 포인트입니다. 첫 번째, 주님은 우리를 사랑하셔서 새 생명을 주셨습니다. 죄인에게 주시는 일방적인 은혜입니다. 율법으로 정죄하는 대신 자신을 희생하신 사랑으로 우리를 구원해 주셨습니다. 이렇게 은혜로 구원받은 사람은 율법을 가지고 남을 정죄하고 비난할 권리가 없습니다. 오직 용서하고 사랑할 의무만 남습니다. 두 번째, 복음의 진리가 상황에 따라 달라져서는 안 됩니다. 베드로는 복음의 진리를 따라 이방 사람과 격없이 식탁교제를 했지만 유대 사람들 앞에서는 그 일을 부끄러워했습니다. 믿음의 고백과 행동이 교회 안에서만 유효한 것은 아닌지 돌아 봅시다. 내 신앙을 감추고 위선적인 모습이 있지는 않은지 스스로를 돌아 봅시다. 나의 기도입니다. 주님, 오직 구원은 주님의 은혜로 주어진 선물임을 깨닫습니다. 제가 행한 모든 일은 그 은혜에 대한 마땅한 반응일 뿐입니다. 자랑할 수도 없고 내세울 수도 없습니다. 죄로 인해 율법의 조주를 받아 죽어 마땅한 인생에게 주님은 새 생명을 주셨습니다. 그 은혜로 날마다 살아가는 제가 되게 해주십시오. 예수님 이름으로 기도드립니다. 아멘
the controversial aspect is the face-off between Peter and Paul. Can you imagine that this is actually recorded in the Bible that we are reading? That there was really a confrontation? That there was really a clash? That there was really this face-off between the two top apostles? Apostles to the Gentiles and apostles to the Jews. Can you imagine that? It was recorded. It was documented. The first century document read by all the churches and the churches even today. And so I want you to hold on to that because it was not an accident why Apostle Paul wrote that. He did not write that face of and confrontation with Peter to shame Peter. It was not written to bring him, to make his name and his apostleship more popular than, a, than Peter. That was not the reason. There was a very deep and serious reason why Apostle Paul had to write. Remember, this letter was being dictated on their way to attend the Jerusalem Council because of an issue that was brought by the Jewish people, believers, who visited Asia Minor teaching and trying to say that the believers, the gentle believers, are still, they still needed to be circumcised in order to be legitimate part of the family or the, or the true people of Israel or the people of God. So the issue here, now listen carefully, the issue is a, is a very thin line dividing between salvation, soteriology, referring to salvation, and ecclesiology. Although this is related to salvation, but the main emphasis of Paul is about the church. As I read and expound the scripture, I want you to lean on the on the ecclesiology part, because most of the time when we read it, by default, we look at it as salvation. Maybe because of the influence of what we have read before, what we have heard before, because he would use terms that are closely related to salvation, but here, the emphasis of Apostle Paul is being part of the community of God or the church. So that's the main issue. Related to salvation, but the focus is the church. So the title of our conversation in part 4 in relation to the issue being discussed in the second part of chapter 2 is what does it mean to be God's people? Who are the true covenant people of God? In Galatians, the entire letter, the issue is, ne is never a salvation. It's he Paul was not talking about how to get saved. Paul was talking about who are really part of the community of God, the church, the true people of God. Because the Jewish people would claim, we are the true covenant people of God. If you want to be part of the community of God, the true people of Israel, then you have to be circumcised. That's their message to the Gentile believers. So Paul would argue and say, no, 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 you're getting it wrong. So Paul would expound it here. So here's the truth, or here's the issue, here's the issue that is actually overarching in the entire second part of Galatians chapter 2. So the issue that Paul was trying to bring up is this, that in God's community, faith in the Messiah is the trademark of God's people. The trademark, the symbol, the, the emblem, the badge. Do you want to know who are the true people of God? Who are the true people of Israel? Who are the covenant people of God? It is not by circumcision. So it's no longer the mark of circumcision, but the trademark of the people of God, the true people of God, according to Apostle Paul, which actually Peter also agreed, is that faith in the Messiah and I have learned that most of us, if not all of us, this is what I have picked up when I was growing up as a new believer, that di ba yung faith in Christ is actually one side of it. There's another side of it that you will learn today. So I want you to really grasp it. Okay, so faith in the Messiah, Jesus the Messiah, is the mark, the trademark, the emblem, the badge of true God's people. So we pick up from last week. They gave us the handshake of fellowship, the right hand of fellowship, Barnabas and Paul. And they just told us, just remember the poor when you go around. Diba? So that was the ending. That was the parting ways. The shake hands of koinonia. Go Peter, go Paul, sabi nina Peter and James. Now verse 11, Paul recalled what happened after. So bumalik si Paul and Barnabas to Antioch, the base. Remember? And here comes the, sec the, the second event. When Cephas, Peter, 
Interestingly, he would use this name of Peter rather than call him Peter. But when Cephas, referring to Peter, came to Antioch, I oppose him to his face. That's a strong word. Because he stood condemned. Oh, oh. So it's, it's one thing when you approach someone and confront someone pub privately. You know, Brad, ayaw ko nung ginawa mo. Kayo-kayo lang, pwede pa yun eh, medyo. But in a public, when you are called out, and this is apparently in a public setting. Why did, Pete, why did Paul do this? He stood condemned. I oppose him to his face. And what happened here? So here comes the, the context. Before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. Uh oh But when they arrived, the men from James, when they arrived, he began, Peter began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belong to the circumcision. The confrontation happened, and then because of that situation in Antioch, they had to go to Jerusalem to settle it. On their way, I don't know how many months passed, on their way to Galatia, Paul Wright dictated this letter. So apparently, what happened in Antioch already reached Galatia. And the version is different. So Paul had to correct the version. That's why he had to mention this. So see, Peter, after the shan handshake of fellowship in Jerusalem, remember, that was the last part? Okay, go. Okay, kayo, Peter. We encourage, we entrust to you, we recognize the gospel. Go, go, go. So pagbalik ni na Pete, Paul and Barnabas to Antioch, after several maybe weeks or months, Peter visited. And when Peter visited Antioch, predominantly Gentile church, Peter started eating with the Gentiles. Remember, Acts chapter 10, Peter had an encounter with Cornelius already. Remember, the vision of the blanket, kill and eat, do not call unclean what I have just cleansed, sabi ni God. So Peter already knew. So when he went to Cornelius' house, he saw it with his own eyes. All Gentiles received the Holy Spirit and they all got baptized. That's why Peter, when he came back, he already knew. We, uh, the Gentiles are now part of the, the people of God. So that's why when he visited Antioch, so feeling ni Peter, wow, this is the church. And he started eating with them. Wala nang issue ki Peter. Eating with the Gentiles, table fellowship, remember. Table fellowship in the first century, especially among the Jews, is very, very important. Hindi lang yung kape-kape na kagaya natin. Table fellowship in those days, if you eat with somebody, it means you agree with him, with his life. So that's why people in those days, they don't, they don't just eat with you. Si Peter, ayos na eh. Tanggap na niya eh. The Antioch Church had to shake hands with Pete, Paul and Barnabas. Then, all of a sudden, men from James, this group of believers claim to be sent by James. Do you want to know if they are really sent by James? Read Acts 15. Sinabi na ni James eh. I heard that there were men who claimed to be sent by us. We did not give them any authorization. Read the book of Acts 15. Na setelyo sabi ni James in his speech. That was the first line. We heard that some of people visited you claiming that we have sent them. I want you to know we did not send them. So this group of people came to Antioch. Eto si Peter nung nakita niya tong mga traditional legalistic Jewish believers ko no. Apparently Peter Na pressure si Peter that he started to draw back. Sabi ng mga Gentile believers, Antio, ay, brother Peter, let's have breakfast. Ay, later nga. He started to draw back. Why? Because of the pressure of the Jewish believers who said, no, 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 no. To, be, to believe in God and yes, be saved, no problem. But to eat on one table, Jews and Gentiles, no, no, no. We have separate table. You know why? Pause for a while. Let's just understand it was not easy for them. For all your life, you grew up, you were brought up, look at the Gentiles as sinners, unclean, idolaters, immoral, and all of a sudden, because of your faith, bigla ka makikikain. Try to imagine the dilemma of the Jewish people in the first century. It was really difficult for them to adjust. Why did Peter do it? Because he was afraid of those who belong to the circumcision. Wow. In fairness with Peter, no, just let's just sympathize a little bit with Peter. He was brought up like that. He actually had a struggle with God himself during the vision. It was barely new. 
So Peter now was already somehow adjusting, getting to know. But because the pressure, sometimes it happens, no? When you have friends or brothers and sisters in the church, all of a sudden, hindi mo ngayon alam where will you play. He was pressured. And then Paul knew about it, saw it, witnessed it, and he could not take it. Look what happened here, the consequence. The other Jews joined him, Peter, in his hypocrisy. That's a strong word. So that by their hypocrisy, by their his hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. Alam niyo yung word na even is a very emotional word when Paul was writing this. Why? Even my best friend, even my ministry partner na kasama ko sa first missionary journey, si Barnabas, the son of encouragement, nadala. I could feel the emotion of Paul here. Even have you encountered situations like that? Dahil may lumabas na rumors, yung closest friend mo na kasama mo for 25 years, probably ninong ng mga anak mo, ninang ng mga anak mo, bigla kang, bigla mo na feel yung distance. Other Jews join him, Peter, in his hypocrisy, so that by their hypocrisy, even my Barnabas, even my companion for the first journey, I can understand the others. But Barnabas, you, we were together for one year visiting Pisidia of Antioch. Lystra, you saw with your own eyes, Gentiles receiving Holy Spirit, being converted to Christ by the grace of God. Barnabas, of all people, that's how strong the situation's there. Because Peter is a prime apostle that the other Jews, without thinking, followed Peter. Alam nyo, nandyan yung principle of Stumbling block. Alam niyo ba yung word na stumbling block? When you do something, people watch you, na-offend sa'yo. Hindi pala yon stumbling block. Na-offend lang. Ang stumbling block, when they see you and they started copying you. That's the point. When somebody saw you doing some unchristian way, for you may not know, and people followed you because they saw you doing it. This is actually what happened here. They saw Peter and withdrew. They started joining Peter in his hypocrisy. Alam niyo po yung word na hypocrisy? In the first century, the word hypocrisy means play acting, wearing mask, actors. Yung mga actors sa play. Kasi nung unang panahon po, ang mga actors walang masyadong makeup. Kasi ngayon puro makeup na, di ba? Doon may maskara sila. That's play acting. The word that was used in the Greek is hypocrisy. That's why we carried it today. You are pretending to be someone who you are not. And Paul called that, that's hypocrisy. You know why? Because he knew that Peter, uh, he, Peter understood. They had a shake hands of the right hand of fellowship. Katatapos lang natin sa Jerusalem, Peter. He knew that Peter understood without a doubt. But he was play acting. Do nagalit si Paul. Why, Peter? That even my Barnabas, my closest friend, nakakadalawa na si Barnabas because after this in Acts 16, when they were bringing Mark, nagka-problema din sila ni Paul. When I saw, Paul elaborated, first part, when I saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, Paul was very protective of the truth of the gospel, that everyone who belongs to them, who believes in the Messiah, belongs to one family, correct? Paul was protecting this truth of the gospel and they saw them, they were not acting in line. For Paul, he was really, it meant life and death for me. Ganun siya serious. Why? Because if that truth of the gospel has been marred and, and diluted and, 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 and uh, nasira, all of us will be affected today. When I saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas, to Peter, in front of them all, kinol out niya, you are a Jew in front of many people, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that, you're, that you force Gentiles to follow, your, to follow Jewish customs? The word force, that was the same word that was used. When I brought Titus to Jerusalem, they did not compel him. That's the same word. They did not compel him to be circumcised. And here you are, you're compelling them, you're forcing them, Peter. Can you imagine Peter and Paul face off? You are a Jew. 
and you live like a Gentile, and you expect the Gentiles to be like you, to follow the Jewish customs, which you yourselves is not faithful to it. Now here, from recalling what happened, Paul now saying, explaining now in behalf of Peter, because he, he knew that Peter knew. Paul knew that Peter understood everything, no doubt. Parang na-pressure lang si Peter eh. Because he was afraid of those. So Peter had no problem theologically. That's why he said that we, including Peter, now he is now reflecting of what happened. This is probably what he thought and what he explained to Peter or what they talk about in Jerusalem. We, who are Jews, sabi ni Paul, who are Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles. So that's how the demarcation, it's either you're a Jew or the sinful Gentiles. Why? The Jews have the law, the Gentiles have no moral law, therefore they are automatic sinners. So the Jews are being guided by the Torah. So we who are Jews, so he's speaking in behalf of Jewish people by birth and not sinful Gentiles, No, we know that a person is not justified by works of the law but by faith in Jesus Christ. So here comes the word. We know that no one is justified, walang declare righteous by doing the works of the law. We know that, Peter. We experience, that's why we were saved because of our faith in Jesus. So here comes the monologue ni Paul. We who are Jews by birth, not, are not sinful Gentiles, we know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus. So here's a heavy theological loaded verse that Apostle Paul would explain some, some more in the, in the book of Romans. Now, before we move on, there are three very important words that Apostle Paul used that I want you to really grasp uh, clearly. Okay? The first word that he used is justified. Paul wrote, because he's Paul knowledgeable of the Old Testament, had a doctorate in the Torah. He's a very uh, learned person. So justified is a term that they use in the court. It's a courtroom term. Acquitted, justified, diva, forgiven, or sentenced. Paul says, we know as a Jew that no one is justified. The word justified means declared righteous. Sabi ni Paul and Peter, we know being Jews, there is no one, no way, a person is justified by law, by doing the works of the law. No one is declared. Because they knew as a Jew that all, kaya nga sabi ni Paul in Romans, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is no one righteous. No, not one. The law, nobody was able to fulfill it. We all know that no one could really fulfill the law. How can we put the same bur burden on our Gentile believers? The same burden we will put on the Gentiles, which we ourselves know that is impossible to accomplish. So that's the background of that. So the word justifies mean no one is declared righteous. All of us fail, Jews and Gentiles. In the book of Romans chapter 3, he said, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Jews and Gentiles. No one was justified by the law. That's the word justified, declared righteous or acceptable. The second word that Paul uses is works of the law. Now, I want you to know it has nothing to do with good works. Kasi minsan, pag nagbabasa tayo ng, gas, o ng letter, pag works, laging, oh, good works, hindi pala nakatingin si Lord sa good works, wrong. Nakatingin siya sa good work. Kaya nga, let your light so shine that they may see your good works, not good looks. Okay? Nagkakamali doon sa pagbabasa, eh, no? Kaya mga Kristiyano, puro guwapo, magaganda, walang good works. Hindi masama yung good looks, but God is glorified by our good works. And the works of the law here has nothing to do with helping the poor. That's not the point of Paul. The works of the law is three things. Sabbath, kosher food, no, no blood, not sacrifice to idols, and circumcision. So pag binabanggit ni Paul yung works of the law, three main, three main, there are several more, but these are the major works of the law that a Jewish believer must fulfill because the time ni Abraham that was the mark of the covenant of God to Abraham. So that was the physical and visible mark between who are God's people and who are Gentiles. So in those times, if you are circumcised, you belong to the Jewish family, the family of Abraham, which they so-called, we are God's people because God's revelation came to us. 
You want to be part of God's people, Gentiles, you can be proselyte. You can be part, but you have to be circumcised. So these are the works of the law. Sabi ni Paul, we know, Peter, that there is no one justified by the works of the law. We have done this when we were young. We were observing Sabbath. We were eating kosher food. Peter, we are all circumcised, and yet we failed, Peter. We know that we got saved. Kasi na-saved si Peter sa kasi Paul, di ba? We, they got saved because of faith in Jesus. Now, no one is declared righteous or acceptable and no one can be declared righteous by the works of the law. Here comes the demarcation line. Very thin. It's related to salvation but the main emphasis is who are God's people. Okay, because the Jews are saying, you want to be part of the true people of Abraham, then you have to do the works of the law. To be part of the Abrahamic covenant family of God. And Paul, Paul would argue, no, 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 no. Here comes Paul. We know no one is justified. And the third word is faith. Now, listen very carefully. The third word was faith. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus. The word faith, Itong understanding natin of us, trusting Jesus or trusting God, the right term, the right terminology, is trusting God for the works of Jesus. Kasi well, that's the work. Eh. God worked in Jesus, sending Him on the cross to die and redeem us all. Now, faith in Jesus is our responsibility. Correct? That is the requirement. We need to put our trust in Jesus. Now, in the Hebrew and the Greek, the translation of faith, pistis, which means also faith or faithfulness of the Messiah. Two things can happen here. It's not only our faith in Jesus, but we are believing and trusting on the faithfulness of Jesus in fulfilling the requirements of God. Because only Jesus fulfilled everything. He accomplished the law. Who is the true Israel? Listen carefully. Who is the true Israel? It's Jesus. It's one person. He is the only one who was able to fulfill and satisfy all the requirements of the law. That's why Paul is saying now, anyone who is in Jesus, doon nag, do nagsimula yung in Christ, the true Israel is in one person. The law and everything that happened in the Old Testament was fulfilled by a single man. Everything is fulfilled in G. Only Jesus is the true Israel. The rest of Israel, the rest of the people who were circumcised failed. No one is righteous, no, not one. So, what we now bang it, who is the true Israel? The true Israel is actually Jesus. By the seed of Abraham, everyone will be blessed. It is through the seed of G the Abraham. Kaya singular, eh, the offspring. Paul would explain it in Galatians. Offspring in the offsprings. By your offspring, Abraham, all the nations will be blessed. So the true Israel was fulfilled in Jesus. And the way Paul understood it, si Paul ang nag-coin ng word na in Christ or Christ in me and I am in Christ. Later on, he will talk about it. Faith is not only us trusting Jesus for what he has accomplished on the cross, but we are also trusting because of the faithfulness of the Messiah. Now, the translation of Acts of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 can be like this. For by grace, we are saved through faith. Diba? Not by works, lest anyone should boast. It can also be translated, we are saved by grace, we have been saved through the faithfulness of the Messiah. Ang katotohanan niyan tayo naligtas through the faithfulness of the Messiah who, who actually fulfilled everything and actually comply and actually redeem us because Jesus was faithful. And through the faithfulness of the Messiah, we have been saved. Do you trust the finished work of Christ on the cross? That's the faithfulness of the Messiah. The, through the seed of Abraham, the nations of the world will be blessed. It's not Israel ang naging blessing sa buong mundo. They actually failed. It is by virtue of Jesus that the nation, that Abraham became a blessing to the rest of the world. And Paul explained that in Galatians. Offspring, it's not plural. Have you read that already in advance? We will go to that. Anyway, so justification, not the works of the law, but by faith 
in the faithfulness of the Messiah. That's why we are justified because of what Christ, the faithful Son of God, has accomplished on the cross. And we have to put our trust in the finished work of Christ. And that means we are also acceptable. So Paul here now continue. He said, so, kaya nga, we too, tayo mga Jews, Peter, we too have put our faith in Christ. Here comes the word. That's why even for us Jews, not only for the Gentiles, even for us Jews, Peter, we too have put our faith in Jesus Christ that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Diba, Peter? Because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. The further explanation, read the book of Romans. So malinaw, malinaw kay Paul, malinaw kay Paul and kay Peter. Alam mo, Peter, you're just play acting, Peter, which I don't like because a lot of people are joining you in your hypocrisy. Even my closest friend, Barnabas, unbelievable. You're getting the picture, brothers and sisters? Now, and Paul rhetorically asked this question. But if, sabi ni Paul, or let's say, but if in seeking to be justified in Christ, we Jews find ourselves among the sinners, the Gentiles, by us joining them in their table fellowship, eating with them. But in seeking to be justified in Christ by our faith, and then we just eat with them, we find ourselves among the sinners. Does that mean that Christ promotes sin? Sabi ni Paul, absolutely not. It's not only the Gentiles that changes their status and identity. Even Jews, you had to change your status. It's no longer Jew nor Gentiles. Kaya doon niya sasabihin yan eh. Kasi the Jews are holding on to it. We are so privileged people. Ibig ba sabihin, a uh, rhetorical question, ibig ba sabihin, Paul, uh, in order for me to be justified, I would eat with the Gentiles. I will associate with the sinners. Hindi ba yon ang Lord, para akong nililid niya sa sin? Sabi ni Paul, no, 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 no. Absolutely not. And then Paul revealed this argument. Look at this. If I rebuild what I destroyed, then I really would be a lawbreaker. <laughs> what do you mean? Diba? Parang, huh? Ito ang ibig sabihin niyan. If I rebuild, ano yung rebuild? The walls of the law that separates Jews and Gentiles by teaching that Peter, by sharing that you have to be circumcised, by play-acting Peter, you are again building the walls that separate us and the Gentiles. If I rebuild what I destroyed, diba? Diba, ni-rebuild natin, yan mismo hindi nga natin magawa eh. We are also destroying the law eh, by not obeying it. If I rebuild what I destroyed, then I would be a lawbreaker. They're sinner, I'm a lawbreaker. It doesn't matter, we all fall short, Peter. If I build that wall again, which I also destroy because I could not, the law of circumcision, the food of Sabbath, if I build that to distinguish me from the Jews, but I also destroy this. Do you think you will be better because you have the wall? You are with the law. You go back to the law. Remember, Peter, even Jews, we failed. Gentile, we are both not justified by these things. Pay attention very carefully. Put down all your phones and everything. Here's the climax because Paul would usually, the bottom line is in the bottom of the line. Okay, then Paul says, remember Peter, no one is justified by the works of the law, only by faith in the Messiah. Because for through the law, I died through the law, that I might live for God. The only way, Peter, is for us to die to the law. Why? Diba, and usually, pag may, sa, isa, isang, sa marriage contract, pag patay na yung isa, you are free. That's the only time you are free. I died to the law. For through the law, I died, sabi ni Paul, to the law. Why? So that I might rise again. Here's come that in the image of dying and resurrection again. Di ba? For through the law, I died to the law. In, in Romans, to die in sin. The baptism, when you are buried, you are buried with Christ. You're right. That's the same analogy here. For through the law, I died to the law. So that I had to die to the law. You see, verse 20 is the famous verse that we all know. He explained, I died to the law. How? I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. What a wonderful verse. 
Because I died to the law, Peter, Galatians. All of us, yung I there is a paradigm. All of us, I have been crucified. If you are in Christ, you have been crucified. If you are in Jesus, you already are dead in your old life. That's what Paul is trying to say. I have been crucified, co-crucified. I, I am co-crucified with Christ, but look, behold, but I'm still alive. Yes, I no longer, I no longer live. The either is the old. I am co-crucified with Christ and I no longer live. The old me is gone. There is a new identity. There is a new status. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. There comes the word again, in Christ. He lives in me and I in him. If I am in Christ, He is also in me. Why am I still alive? Because the life now that I have is because Christ lives in me now. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith or the faithfulness in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. This is a returning to chapter 1 when He said, the gospel is that God gave Himself for us and He rescued us. From the present evil age. Remember in chapter 1 verse 4, bumalik sa doon sa theme na gave himself, binigay niya ang kanyang buhay sa atin. No? This is beautiful. If you are a believer of Jesus, listen carefully, if you believe in Jesus, you die to your old self. Ha? Paano yung pastor? Because you are in Christ, you are co-crucified with Christ. Eh, pero buhay ako, Pastor. Yes, the life that now you live in the body, it is because Christ is now living in you. The life I now live in the body, I live it through the faithfulness, by faith in the Son of God who loved me. Kaya itong buhay ko ngayon, I will live this life for God, for the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. That's what it means to be God's people. That's what it means to be truly free from the old life that we may live our lives for the faithfulness of the Messiah. You're getting it, brothers and sisters? Tayong lahat na naniwala kay Kristo, we have all been crucified. So this life that we are living, you live it for the glory of God. That's why sabi ni Paul in Corinthians, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, you do it for the glory of God. Colossians, whether to live or die, we belong to Christ. I hope we realize this very important truth. We're not enjoying this life for our sakes. We have been given a new identity. The Jews, you're no longer Jew and you're in Christ's eyes. That's not, that's, the identity is gone. Gentiles, you're being a sinner from the point of view. That's already gone. Kaya nga, the Jews and the Gentiles are now one in Christ. There is no more Jews nor Gentiles. Slaves or free. Male or female. We are one in Christ. In chapter 3, pinipreempt natin yung sinabi ni Paul. But we are one in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, He is a new creation. The old is gone. Behold, the new has come because Christ now lives in me. Kaya yung, yung kanta natin, we were not what we used to be. Why? Because Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith by the Son of God who loves me and gave Himself for me. And finally, sabi ni Apostle Paul, so what do we do? Sabi ni Paul, I do not set aside the grace of God. So, it's puwera ko ang, ang biyaya ng Diyos. No, I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness could be gained through the law, through the circumcision, Sabbath, and food law, Christ died for nothing. Mawawalang bisa yung pagkamatay ni, cross, ni Christ sa cross. Peter, Galatians, remember, if you will submit and go back to circumcision because of these men that visited you, you are going back to your old life. That identity is already gone. That has already gone. The new world has already started. The new creation has been launched. And you're part of it. And in this new one family in Christ, there are neither Jews nor Gentiles. That's why the overarching truth that Paul is arguing in this is faith in the Messiah, Jesus, is the trademark of God's people. It's no longer the circumcision, the food laws, or the observance of Sabbath. Why are we putting the same burden which we ourselves, Jews, have failed to do and we put it on our gentle brothers? That's why nga Christ died. 
that we can be set free and live this life for the Son of God. Wow, this is powerful. Do you know what's the sign, the badge, the emblem, and the symbol of God's people? Sino ba talaga ang mga tao ng Diyos? Yung parating sumisimba? Hindi naman masama. Yung kumakanta ng masaya? Yung may malaking Bible? Ano pa ba? What are the signs? Those are not the signs of the true people of God. Faith. In faithfulness in the Messiah, faith in the faithfulness of the Messiah is the trademark of God's people because Christ is the true Israel. If anyone is in Christ, therefore we can be declared righteous and acceptable in the family of God. Not only saved, but you are acceptable in the one single family of Jesus. You know, assignment ko sa inyo, read Acts 15. And try to feel what is going on. The speech of Peter and the speech of James. So I'll just give you a glimpse of the speech of, of James. After all the deliberation, Peter spoke. Paul and Barnabas were given the chance to testify of what happened in the first journey. And then James, as the pastor of Jerusalem Church, stood up, summarized everything. This is what he said. A glimpse, so I want you to read. Because simultaneously, when they were writing these Galatians, they were on their way to attend the Jerusalem Council to settle it once and for all. And this is what James said. This is now my conclusion, sabi ni James. We should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. They wrote a letter, send it to the churches in Galatia, in the Asia Minor. At ang sabi ng sulat, Wala nang ibang requirement. Only the following. Iwasan yung kumain ng may dugo and food offered to idols. Ang pangatlo, sabi niya, ito na lang, avoid sexual immorality. You know why? The Jews who are following the law, because they have the law and the moral law of God, they were guided by the law. But they are not perfect. May mga immoral din. But the Gentiles, sex, living, sexual licentious immorality is very common. That's their usual lay of life. Kaya may mga temple prostitutes, everything is so bad. And sabi ni Paul, ni Peter, iwasan niyo kumain ng may dugo at food offered to idols and avoid sexual immorality. Read church history. One of the comments of the Greek world to the Christians, they don't sleep around. Oh, that's a good. The Christians, oh, these are the people that they don't sleep around. Because it's very common during those times, they just sleep around. But the Christians, they remain faithful to their spouses, living a holy life. That's the distinction. According to a secular history, the Christians, they do not sleep around. Wow. And how do we now apply this in our lives? Here's my challenge. What will you say to us? Exactly the same I said to Peter. Behave according to the gospel. Mga kapatid, let us behave according to the truth of the gospel. Sana wala hindi tayo maging katitisuran na makita tayo ng mga nakakabata sa atin at gayahin tayo. That's the worst responsibility we have. So be careful. Not be careful. Behave. Kasi yung may nag-iingat, nagtatago yun eh. Don't be careful. Behave pala. Sorry. Kasi sabi ni Pastor, be careful. Pwede pa rin palang gawin. Basta be careful lang. May bad connotation eh. No, no, no. no. Erase. Edit. Behave according to the truth of the gospel. Amen.
各位弟兄姐妹们，大家主礼平安。今天我们继续进入加拉太书第二章十一到二十一节的系列。今天继续造住福音生活。保罗对彼得的单众讲话，在十四节，单众这样子的单众对使徒彼得讲话。高潮呢？出现在哪里呢？高潮就出现在第十六节。十六节这么说，我们也就信了基督耶稣，使我们因信基督称义，不是靠行律法，因为没有人能靠行律法称义。因信称义是基督教的信仰核心，是保罗对福音的结论。我们常以为自己或者是其他人已经掌握了因信称义的真理，以及对我们生命的影响，甚至连我们说不要以为自己已经懂了的时候，都常常忘记解释到到底什么是我们还不懂的。不过，既然我们在这里看到连彼得那样的使徒，都还要学习因信称义这个真理，我们呢，肯定也需要一直不断的学习因信称义的真理。所以，我们首先要把因信称义的思想和保罗对彼得的争议连在一起看。原本的争议是。的关于洁净的争议，呃，是不洁净的，于是洁净的才能够敬拜神。保罗看到彼得不愿意和外邦人一起吃饭，他就提醒彼得，别忘记了上帝所启示他的。就是在基督里，我们是洁净的。这个是上帝曾经在《使徒行传》第十一章，还有第十五章，让彼得看到的意象。那个就带出这样的意思，就是在基督里，我们都是洁净的，不管是犹太人还是外邦人，只要在基督里，都是上帝所洁净的。在旧约里面。你必须是洁净的，也就是遵守礼仪律法，才能够敬拜神、蒙神悦纳，进到上帝的面前。虽然“洁净”这个字没有出现在第十一到十三节里面，但从整个的经文啊、呃，特别十二节那里就提到割礼，还有呢饮食，以及所有律法规条。在讲的就是跟洁净有关系的，因信称义，不是靠律法。当弟兄姐妹在听的时候，可以一边看括号里面打的经文。如果我们的称义是透过相信耶稣基督所成就的，那就代表我们不是透过自己的行为得救，遵守律法。无法拯救我们，因为我们根本也不能去遵守律法，因为我们都是在罪里堕落的。这个就是当保罗说“我借着律法已经向律法死了”的意思。如果我们好好读保罗其他的书信，你就知道他不是要说我们再也不需要遵守。神的律法的，还是需要遵守神的律法。嗯，上帝还是透过保罗告诉我们，叫基督徒要遵守律法的。比如说《哥林多前书》六章十五到十六节，保罗对哥林多人说，在性方面不道德的行为是错的。保罗指出这样的行为是错的，然后呢？保罗是把自己的论点，他所说的话建立在创世纪关于婚姻的说法
，他是回到律法书里面。保罗的意思是，他向借由遵守律法而得救死了，他向律法的咒诅死了。如果我们称义不是靠律法，而是靠着耶稣基督，二章十六节所说的，那么律法就无法咒诅我们如果我们感到受咒诅，如果我们怕上帝再也不听我的祷告，或者是会不会我呃不小心犯罪，上帝又不关心我，呃、那我们就是忘了自己已经向。律法死了，忘记了律法没有办法对我们造成任何的伤害。当然，我们犯罪了，我们还是要认罪，还是要悔改的。因为基督徒的生活就是不断悔改的生活。那保罗怎么样透过律法，向守律法而称义死呢？当他想要遵守律法，他发现到自己根本根本就行不到律法。保罗说：“如果不是透过律法，我不会知道什么是罪；如果不是透过律法，我不会知道我无法靠自己守全部的律法。”保罗透过顺服律法，就发现自己需要救主，因为根本不能顺服完全部的律法。律法最终所要指向的，还是我们。需要救主耶稣基督。讲到因信称义，不止停留在刚开始你信耶稣重生，然后被称义的那一个地位而已。啊，整个因信称义也包括了为神而活的整个成圣的旅程。嗯，这个是我们要去。啊、呃，看和注意的，嗯，因为很多的人误以为讲阴性称义，阴性称义就只是认为信耶稣就好了，我就可以不用来教会，就可以不用再守律法了，就信耶稣吧，呃、信耶稣等着上天堂就好了，嗯，这样子。但圣经的教导不是这样的啊，圣经的教导是阴性称义，包括了为神而活。所以，我们现在不管信主多少年，我们还是在这个阴性称义的道路上，还要继续的走下去。刚才我们已经嗯、呃、有思考了第十六、十九节，嗯、呃，对这些经文也有更清楚的认识。那我们先看，现在看第十七和十八节，十七和十八节。呃，他的意思是什么呢？他的意思就是，如果一个人知道自己因信称义，却还犯罪的话，那是因为在基督里因信称义鼓励他犯罪吗？啊，信耶稣称义就让他可以尽量犯罪吗？当然不是。但如果一个人说自己信耶稣基督，却仍不愿意，还是不愿意离开罪恶的生活，啊、呃。然后，基督也已经死了啊！为了这个罪的公价，上十字架而死了。但这个人讲他信了，还是不停的犯罪，完全没有想要改变自己的生活啊，还想要继续赌博啦，还需想要继续沉迷电子游戏或者不旧的生活。这样呢，那很大可能啊，八成他是还没有真正认识福音，他肯定还没有真正的认识福音，所以他还会认为说，哎，我信主就够了，然后生活一成不变。嗯，一个真正因信称义的人，真正认识福音的人，信福音的人，他的生命不会是这样的。嗯。当我这样说的时候，呃，我不是说成为啊基督徒就永远不会犯罪了，我们还是会有软弱，还是会这一个的生命跟之前的生命是完全不一样的，已经有很大的改变了，很大改变了
，啊，我们因信称义，我们就脱离了罪恶死亡的权势了，就不被罪恶控制，啊，因为我们现在还在这个有充满罪恶的世界当中，然后我们的肉肉体呢，啊，也是有被罪恶玷污的，所以我们成为了基督徒，我们还是继续要来在这个情欲和圣灵的象征之间，我们来去，呃，为主而活的。选择为主而活的，嗯，这个生命虽然在当中会有软弱，但是生命已经改变不一样了。我们可以靠着圣灵去体贴圣灵的意思，可以靠着圣灵去遵守上帝的律法。因此呢，保罗在这两节，呃，他会想到两种人，第一种。是已经称义而悔改的罪人，就是在我们当中多数的都是这样，已经称义而悔改的罪人。而第二种呢，就是还没有称义且不愿意悔改的啊，悖逆的基督徒。虽然口里说信耶稣，但心里却没有真正的去相信，然后整个的行为。也看不出他这因信称义所带出的果子。保罗在第十九节就总结了一个真正因信称义的人是如何的看待生命的，因为保罗他向律法死了，他现在可以为神而活，意思就是说，保罗在信主以前，他没有。为神而活的，啊，那时候虽然他以为自己呃正在为神而活，但那时候他还是没有被呃主耶稣基督的圣灵光照，他还呃还是呃靠着自己去去守的，然后他也以为自己是为神大发热心，呃，但是一旦他被耶稣基督的光照了，那时候开始他就整个人啊。呃生命改变了，那时候他才开始为神而活。保罗是一个道德非常好的人，但是在他还没有信主的时候，他所做的一切都是为了自己。虽然嘴巴说是为了神啊，但都是为了自己，其实是为了自己。但保罗还不知道自己已经蒙上帝悦纳，他遵行神旨意，为了要得赏赐，而不是出于对上帝纯洁的爱啊，在耶稣基督的里面，那时候是还没有信主的时候，而现在呢，他信主了，他就已经蒙上帝诚意和悦纳的，他就有了顺服上帝的心的。动机，而这个新的动机比起以前更加的全面，更加的有力，是完全不一样的。保罗单单渴望为了那位第二十节所说的爱我、为我舍己的主而活。在过后，加拉太书第五章，我们就会看到更多怎么样为主而活。现在，保罗要我们了解，上帝的接纳给了我们一个新的动机，而且是更强的动机，去顺服上帝的旨意，遵行上帝的旨意。而这个动机呢，这个心态呢，跟因行为称义完全不同的。所以呢，接下来，呃，这个十九节。啊、呃，这个律法让我们知道，我们永远不可能靠着遵行律法让自己得到神的接纳的。所以，我不再向律法活着，我已经和我的救主一同向律法死了。虽然以前顺服神，但那只是为了从神得到好处，只是为了自己。那个是保罗，保罗他自己讲自己。呃，而如今呢，他顺服上帝是为了。讨神喜悦，如今是为神而活，向神活着了
过去为象是向着律法活，现在是向着上帝而活。当你这样子明白，你就会更理解和体会第二十节啊、呃、所讲的那个带来生命改变的应用。这两句话之间有很明显的一个张力。保罗讲：“现在活着的不再是我。”然后他就讲什么：“如今在柔生中活着的我。”嗯，不过呢，这个张力事实上让我们看到，身为基督徒，我们应该如何看待自己的生活方式。<咳>我们单单看第二十节，好像只要放轻松，基督就会给我们能力。让我们以正确的方式去生活。如果你又单单看第二十一节，好像我们一切都要自己来，嗯，我们要我们要把这两句话放在一起来看，因为在希腊文里面，二十到二十一节是一句话来的，意思是<咳>第二。你如何对从来没有上过教会的人解释因性成义呢？啊，如果你这个不会解释的话，那你真的要好好努力一下功夫了。嗯，加上如果你信主很多年却还不懂得解释这个基督教信仰的核心，啊、呃，这个也是也是传福音啊，就就代表说，如果你不会解释因性成义，那你还不会传福音，你还不懂得传福音。那、嗯、我们要好好的明白，然后我们有机会，我们就跟人解释。还有第三，好人啊，在这个世界的人认为的好人，世界的标准看的好人，跟基督徒上帝上帝看为义的义人啊，有什么不同？嗯，有什么不同？让我们先一起同心祷告。我们在天上的父，我们感谢你在基督耶稣里赐给我们新的生命，我们也有新的心啊！感谢上帝，借着耶稣基督这样的为我们舍己，让我们今天不再是为自己活，乃是靠那为我们死而复活的主活。求主圣灵继续引导我们的脚步，能够符合。福音真理，并且在每一天的生活当中，照这福音去活。我们谢谢你垂听我们同心合一的祷。